I'm Susie J. Silbert, and I'm curator of post-war and contemporary glass at the Corning Museum of Glass in New York. Today, I'm super excited to be speaking with you on behalf of Masterpiece Art Fair about a topic I don't get to talk about quite as much as I would like, which is ceramics. Um, and today, I'm going to be talking about three incredible works uh, encompassing a range of time periods from the Renaissance uh, to studio ceramics of the mid 20th century and then contemporary. As somebody that focuses on post-war and contemporary work in general, talking about the Renaissance seems like something I wouldn't normally do or wouldn't normally get to. But in particular, the work of Bernard Palissy, who is a, a French Huguenot potter from the 16th century, I find incredible inspiration in. And the reason that I do is that in his kind of ooey gooey, icky drippy platters that show um, pond life, incredible pieces that have this rich, um, luscious lead glaze with uh, snail shells and with ferns and with other plants and salamanders, I see um, what it is in what it is to be a contemporary maker, what it is to really be thinking through materials. And what I mean by that um, is that Palissy is somebody who, he worked in, in so many different ways. He actually got started as a, a glass painter, a stained glass artist, but he had this moment, um, this moment with a small white cup, uh, ceramic cup, and I think for any of us that are interested in objects, we've had moments um, with a piece that changed our life, and it changed his life. And he sat about, set about trying to make um, this kind of pure ceramics. And at the time, there was no porcelain in Europe. It was only something that Chinese ceramicists made. And so he wants to try and figure out how to do that. And he's obsessive about it. He, he has such a pursuit of of making porcelain that he he almost kind of ruins himself. I mean, to get the, the furnaces up so high to make porcelain, um, you you have to you have to achieve an incredible temperature. And he uses he burns like the furniture in his house trying to make his furnaces get to that temperature. And he listen, he doesn't succeed. And I think that's something. First of all. As somebody that's interested in objects, interested in materials, the idea of failure, the idea of pursuit and not getting there, I mean, that is, uh, that is so much of what making is about. But then beyond that, what policy is up to, what, what he's doing is he might not be achieving porcelain, but he is learning and his objects uh, at the time and now are evidence of learning, of this natural, um, n natural history, kind of natural, um, natural phenomena. So what I mean by that is, here's this time, 16th century, major changes in the, in the world that Europeans in particular have in front of them. So age of exploration, it's the beginning of colonialism and all the things that come uh, from that. Uh, people are seeing materials from all over the world. They're gathering them together in Kunstkammers, the early beginnings of museums, and they are studying these objects to learn. Palissy looks in his backyard, sees this pond, sees all these life forms coming from this pond, thinks that, that that's where uh, life starts. And he begins capturing the little creatures and he, he thinks like, oh, this pond, if this pond, this putrefaction, the beginning of life, the end of life, if it's all from this pond, I should make the pond in my work. And he captures the creatures. He makes life casts from them. He's one of the first people to do that. He arranges them in these platter forms um, that, that are themselves an idea of the world and the, an idea of creation. He arranges the, um, the plants and animals within them. He, fires them, he glazes with this incredible lead glaze. The lead makes the glaze melt at a lower temperature and run together. So you get this sense in this object that at first glance might not be beautiful. Um, you, you, you get this sense of uh, creation in, in all of its different layers. And anyway, that is what I love uh, about this piece and what I love thinking about Palissy's work in general. It is this idea that craftsmen every single day in their studio are learning and they are contributing knowledge and knowledge to us.